is he the worst human being in the history of YouTube? Oh man, I need wine. Hold on, this is stressful. This honestly, this video I thought was going to be an easy rant video, funny, lighthearted, just you know, kind of angry with Chris Hansen vibe. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized that there's actually quite a lot to the story that requires context. So probably yet another long video from me. Sorry in advance. So I'm pretty sure Chris Hansen has like a blacklist of creators that criticize him. He doesn't want to hear it, so he just blocks away. We'll see if I end up on that list. I feel like I shouldn't because I'm trying to be as nuanced as I possibly can be. Like I said, I went into this video angry and wanting to rant, but I really did look into it and I'm going to try to represent each viewpoint. I'd like to see what you guys think in the comments below, but overall I am still pretty pretty peeved. And to relieve that stress, I would like to thank, oh this is hilarious, I would like to thank today's sponsor adamandeve.com. They always send me amazing things and I like to unbox them on my second channel youtube.com slash Jacqueline Vlogs. I will leave a link in the description below. So click on that if you want to watch all the amazing things that they sent me and make sure that you remember if you go to adamandeve.com and you use my name Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N, as a code at checkout, you get 50% off any one item and free shipping, which is an amazing deal. Thank you Adam and Eve. Let's get back into the video. As a lot of you guys know, I went on Chris Hansen's show to be interviewed about Onision. Mike Morris was also there. Tonight, we have Jacqueline Glenn with us. We have Mike Morris with us. And I was really excited to do this for a few different reasons. First of all, I too was a fan of Chris Hansen. I watched To Catch a Predator. I was starstruck. I was excited. I thought this was, you know, a very interesting situation where he was becoming involved in YouTube drama, as he puts it, that I myself have been battling for years. I have been fighting Onision and covering stories about him and my involvement with him for years. So this brings me to my second point of being excited. You know, seeing somebody like Chris Hansen come into the mix. I mean, you you think about Chris Hansen, you think about all that he has achieved, you think about his status, you think about his connections or alleged connections to the FBI and and you think, "Oh my god, finally this this guy is going to come in and add legitimacy to everything that everybody's been working so hard for. He's going to add validity. He's going to make things happen." Well, not a lot's happened. In addition to not a lot happening, it seems as though he is now working with Discovery about the Onision case, which has a lot of people pretty frustrated. You see, there are channels like mine, there are channels like Repsion, Blair, Creepshow Art. I mean, I could sit here for a long time and talk about all the channels that have made content on Onision, tried to bring justice to the situation that is a shit show on YouTube. It's embarrassing. And Chris Hansen, to be fair, essentially brought on all of these different creators and had us reiterate what we had already said in our own videos. Now, I knew this. I knew this going in and chose to do it because I wanted to bring more eyeballs to it. And I know my audience only has a certain reach and Chris Hansen was going to push that further. And in my opinion, the more people that knew about what Onision was doing, the better, the higher chance that future people will know what he's up to and not become another victim. And hopefully a higher chance that he'll actually be brought to some kind of justice. Chris Hansen was getting quite a bit of money from the situation. I knew he was profiting largely, like a lot from these super chats. And I went in knowing that. I viewed what he was doing as such a positive thing, as such a huge help to this movement, honestly, to get rid of somebody from this platform who is hurting people. But yeah, a lot of people are pissed that he is selling the Onision story and he has publicly said, no I'm not, I'm not selling the story, but he is working with Investigation Discovery to try and make this a show. Which brings up a lot of arguments as to whether or not he even can sell this story, is it really his story to sell? The answer to that is clearly no, but from my understanding what he's doing is working with Investigation Discovery to continue this series basically just on TV. I'm going to try to approach this with some nuance. I'm gonna have to go back and give you some context and when I say nuance I mean things like just the topic of making money. A lot of people feel that he shouldn't get super chats, he shouldn't make money with working with mainstream TV and all of these things. There's a lot of ethical reasoning being brought into why people think he shouldn't be able to do that. But question, what about all of the creators on YouTube that are posting videos that are monetized about Onision? This has been going on for years. For years people have been making videos not only on Onision but other 
predators, I fucking YouTube, I'm just gonna say it, on the internet that we're trying to bring awareness to. You know, Blair makes a lot of videos like this, I make a lot of videos like this, Repsion makes a lot of videos like this, countless channels do commentary on real problems that have real victims and real consequences, but it's important to be able to do that. It's essentially news. And without giving that information to the public, without putting a spotlight on these people doing bad things, they would essentially get away with it. No one would know, and they would have a much higher chance at putting future people in a really dangerous spot of becoming victims. If there were no way to profit from this, right? I put a sponsor on this video, you know? If there were no way, if people couldn't monetize their videos, which everybody has, I've seen countless Onision videos about serious things that have sponsors, that have ads, I personally don't find this to be an issue. Because if people want to receive this information and they want creators to be able to continue full-time making content that gives you this information that is vital, then you have to be able to support yourself by doing that. Otherwise, you know, we're all gonna be doing something else. If I couldn't make a living from YouTube, I would be doing another job, obviously. And if I were doing something else, or any of these creators were doing something else, we would not be able to be here putting these people on the spotlight, which needs to happen. So in my opinion, whenever I see somebody with a sponsor or an ad, I'm like, hell yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Obviously I'm biased because I am doing the same thing, but I also support fellow creators and what they do. And I know a lot of people have an issue with this, but for some reason it seems like no issues are being raised about creators making money from this entire situation. It's only about Chris Hansen. People are only mad that Chris Hansen is getting super chats. And to be fair, he is essentially just giving a larger platform to reiterate what they've already said in those videos. So a lot of people, understandably so, are frustrated with him thinking that he is just using creators, you know, and basically taking the contents of their video and, and monetizing it for himself. And I agree. That is what he's doing. But I knew that that's what he was doing whenever I went on to his show. I knew that he was going to make money off of my information that I had put in my own videos. And I was okay with that because the trade-off for me was giving a larger voice to this problem. So the money thing is really difficult for me because it's like, I feel like we have a choice at the end of the day. We can either have this information readily available, we can have people spreading this information and preventing God knows what these people would do in the future if they didn't have the spotlight put on them, or the alternative is people can't support themselves by doing that, they get other jobs, and this information is just not presented. These people get away with it. The spotlight isn't on them, so I feel like we have a choice. We can either accept that people need to make money doing their job or accept that people will just get away with it because it's unethical to profit. Now I'm gonna get into a lot more detail with this because there are a lot of other reasons why people have issues with Chris Hansen behaving the way that he is, but I do want to bring that point to the forefront because I've seen a lot of people complaining about it and it's just, of all the things, I feel like that isn't the core of what we should be focusing on. So I have a list of things here on my computer that Chris Hansen has done that are really sketchy that I feel like I need to point out because they will tie into future points that I want to make. In 2013, he was fired by NBC because photos emerged of him cheating on his wife. Horrible. He had various other shows that followed that. They all flopped. So he decided to create an internet show. He wanted to bring To Catch a Predator online. And to do that, he started a Kickstarter to raise money so that he could accomplish this and raised $89,000. He gets fired in 2013. Then in 2015, he comes up with this idea, has about 1,200 people help him raise almost $90,000. And then he never followed through and he kept the money. And yeah, now in 2020, 2019 when he started, he went on YouTube, but the quality was just trash. I mean, it's like a webcam. There's no production value that needed to go into that. Certainly not $90,000 worth. So these people were just completely swindled. They were told they would get early access to shows that would be a web series that never happened. They were told they would get autographed photos. They were told they would get mugs. And a lot of these people never got anything. And some of them finally got a mug like two or three years later. And let me tell you, if you go on the Kickstarter and I will leave it linked below if you wanna read through all the comments, there are people that are really unhappy with this and understandably so. Couldn't even be bothered to send out a signed photo. I mean, hell, you could even do it digitally. Who's the con man now, Chris? Yeah, you got the charges dropped, but you still scammed everyone. Thanks for nothing, you con man. By the way, the charges dropped refer to the enormous amount of debt that he has accumulated through 
tax evasion, among many, many other things, which landed him in about $1.5 million in debt. So he keeps all of this money, probably in an effort to pay off what he's doing. He, he goes on YouTube, he creates these shows in an effort to pay off what he's doing. He accepts all these ridiculous sponsorships, which we'll get into. He's in a desperate spot right now. Chris Hansen blocked me from Twitter. Guess he couldn't handle the truth. Still haven't got my signed photo. Guess Chris got caught in one of his stings. What an asshole, by the way. I'd like to punch him in the balls. It's been years at this point. How can you not fulfill the promised perks? I'm sure no one monitors this anymore, but I'd certainly like my money back. At this point, if anything ships, it'll be to an obsolete address. Hope the new tenant likes it and uses his face in the photo as toilet paper after nasty diarrhea. Oh my God. That's 2015. Let's hop to 2019. I get contacted by Vincent Nicotra and he was working with Chris Hansen and there is just a long list of offenses that this guy has done. He did quite a bit to sabotage the investigation against Onision, including like damaging evidence, which I will explain. I found this long list on Reddit of things that he's done that are extremely inappropriate, like doxing people, saying misogynistic and homophobic comments, abuses the YouTube copyright system, and the bottom point, I think, is the absolute worst. He gave Sarah's laptop back to her, previously Onision's laptop. He claimed he would give it to the FBI, but it turns out he didn't do that. Is the FBI even involved? At this point, I don't know, but that's tampering with evidence. Had that gone straight to the police, maybe something could have been done. But if it's gonna sit in his hands for that long, they can't, they can't use anything. And my only guess is that they were trying to get all the information and be the first ones to release it. If they gave it to the police, they wouldn't be able to gather that and they wouldn't be able to put it on the internet and get all the views and pats on the back for it. So I think that they held this trying to find something, but once you have it for that long, it's not gonna be admissible anymore because you could have tampered with it. Moving forward, then I was on Chris Hansen's show being interviewed about my experiences with Onision, which there are many, they're not good. And on that episode, I was also there with Mike Morse. Mike Morse has himself been accused of sexual assault. Here it says he was accused of inappropriately grabbing a paralegal and a receptionist and making sexual comments. You're gonna go after predators and have somebody on your show who has done things like that? You're supposed to be an investigative journalist. You're supposed to look into people. How did you not know? Did you either not know or not care? It's either laziness or apathy and neither are a good look. And speaking of things that are not a good look, he has, he basically will do anything for money. He had somebody on his show promoting, in my opinion, a coronavirus scam. Cause this, this sounds ridiculous to me. Um, we have a non-toxic water-based, no residue product that can be applied to any surface. He asks if it's FDA approved. There's no record of it anywhere from the FDA, but I'll let you make up your mind. It will kill the virus that comes into contact with that surface for up to 70 to 90 days. Leaves behind no residue, but it lasts for 90 days. 70 to 90 days. So uh, there is nothing else that I know of that hasn't ever been able to do this. Someone tell me this isn't an ad. This is clearly an ad. I feel like I'm on South Park trying to figure out if this guy's an ad or not. He clearly is. Does she know she's an ad? Does she know she's an ad? Why don't you have a seat? But that is very minor compared to what we're about to get into. He promoted a phone <laughs> that is made by a business run by Pablo Escobar's brother. You can't make this shit up. I couldn't find this anywhere, but I did find someone commenting on it in a stream. So enjoy the ad. To be the best phone out right now. What is this? Hold on now. What is Damn, this phone? The best phone? I've never heard of it. The Escobar phone? phone? Wait. Phone Wait a minute from now. Mexico, dude. But the marketing for the Escobar Fold is easily the best part. So if you go to their YouTube channel, which is truly incredible, I'll link it below. It currently has about 14 videos on it, including a one minute video panning back and forth across five <laughs> fold phones, maybe all that they'd made at that time. Uh, there's an unboxing yeah. video that I'm pretty sure if I show more than about 30 <laughs> seconds of it, it's gonna get this video demonetized. Uh, they have a video called ripsamsung.com and then there's uh, two other endorsement videos so those endorsement videos you see where he was right it was some lady promoting it then him promoting it and then the three phones side by side here you can see those endorsements have been removed i don't know what happened if he reached out and asked them or if they did it because they were getting a lot of backlash and it wasn't a good look i don't know but they're gone they're gouging you for money Meanwhile, chris hansen <laughs> 
Anka. Hey guys, Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators, and to catch a predator, I just wanted to tell you all that I've seen this amazing new smartphone called the Escobar Fold 2. It appears to be the best phone out right now. I've been looking at the transcripts. So have a seat, what? check it out, and remember, I'll be watching. Holy Four million shit. People. Jesus, that's so bad. Again, you are an investigative journalist. Escobar phones? You didn't know? Apathy or ignorance? And I think in this case, apathy. Oh, and then there's this gem. I want you to know that the Love All LGBTQ plus support community has some exciting news. Now they've added maps to the collection. I think this is important and it's important to share this love. So you take care, take advantage of this, the LBGTQ Love All Collection. Remember, I'll be watching. <laughs> it doesn't get better. It does not get better than that. Come on, did you not know what you were saying? I hope, I'm really hoping that it's ignorance. Or will you really just say anything people pay you to say on Cameo? Hilarious. I should make a Cameo and then just, you know, you guys can see what you can get me to say. I might say, and I'm Chris Hansen at the end, but that's fine. So back to him selling the Onision story to Investigation Discovery. There is a lot, a lot of lying going on, and we're going to talk about all of it. So Chris Hansen obviously was getting a lot of backlash from this, and he says, no one is selling the rights to a story, to a network, that's not even how it works, and why would you not explore expanding an important story to a wider audience? Shouldn't the survivors' voices in the quest for justice go beyond YouTube? So he's saying, I didn't do it, but if I did, it'd be great. I... <laughs> So how this whole thing got started was Chris was interviewed by Mel Magazine. The guy who printed it worded it in a way that Chris Hansen said he didn't approve. They said that he sold the rights to the Onision story and he wanted them to correct it and they came out with this addendum. A previous version of the story indicated that the television network Investigation Discovery had bought the rights to the story of Onision, the YouTuber alleged to have blank 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 women, some of whom were minors. More precisely, Chris Hansen signed a deal with Investigation Discovery to do a TV series on the Onision story. So I feel like he should have just come out and said this and been more honest. It kind of feels like he's playing a game of semantics. He's saying, no, I didn't sell the story because you can't sell the story. That's not how it works, but I am doing the story on TV. It says Chris Hansen signed a deal with Investigation Discovery to do a series on Onision. Again, there are mixed reactions on this. A lot of people think that he is well within his rights to bring this story to a larger audience and that it could be helpful. And they think that he is, as a journalist, entitled to any money that he makes. Wow, Chris Hansen is a terrible dude. He's making money. Good for him. Nothing wrong with cashing in on the work you put in. Now, the argument there is that it's the work everybody else put in, but I will move on. They have more resources and connections than Hansen does and every incentive to air the story on their channel. So why would this be a bad thing? Jealous virtue signaling YouTubers. That's all this is. Nothing wrong with this. They'll do a good job with it with a full amount of resources more than Chris has. So although some people are defending him, he's getting a lot more criticism than support. And because of that, he decided to upload a video on Twitter trying to explain away why he's doing this with Investigation Discovery. Hey everyone, I thought I'd take a quiet moment today to talk about some of the drama playing out on social media. Drama on social media. The way he says it is in such a condescending tone. It's like he's trying to make fun of people on YouTube talking about things in the same way that he does. But when it's by somebody that's a YouTuber, it's drama. Surrounding a potential television project on the Onision investigation. Let me be very, very clear here. Anyone that is suggesting that such a project would take place without the consideration of the consultation with or the participation of the victims in this case is either ill-informed, lying to you, or more likely, trying to gin up drama for their own selfish reasons, to promote their own drama channels. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not the one lying, Chris? You sure? Because I've seen a lot of things from victims saying they want nothing to do with this. Here's my official statement on all this TV hullabaloo. I found out the same way all of you did. I never wanted to, nor will, be a part of it. This is not what anybody wanted from what I can tell except the TV people. If she's finding out for the first time online, then he's obviously not reaching out and making contact with everybody and making sure they're okay with it. But I do want to play devil's advocate for a second with this. I am of the mindset that when you put something online, it, it exists online forever. And you just don't do it if you don't want that to happen. So 
when I went on Chris Hansen or when anybody went on Chris Hansen, you have to be prepared for that content to end up wherever it ends up. You know, he owns the rights, not to the Onision story, but to what was put on his channel, and all of us consented to be on his channel. I know I didn't sign any kind of contract saying it couldn't be used elsewhere, and this is the kind of thing you have to be careful of. I mean, almost everything should involve a contract, and if it doesn't, and you consent to being in something that somebody else owns, this could happen. Then there is this note from Haley. I was going to stay silent because talking about all this brings me a lot of stress that I truly don't need right now, but I'm realizing that seeing all the lies and rumors flying around stresses me out more. Chris Hansen is not the good guy. He had been talking to Investigation Discovery about a show without any of us knowing for literally six months. Chris's concern is Chris alone. He is trying to bring his career back to TV and in my opinion is using victims to do it. He's been hella pushing contracts for Investigation Discovery without considering anyone's feelings on it. My hope in him is lost and I'm sad, but can't justify this man's actions anymore. He has shown where his priorities lie. As everything stands, there will be no show with Sarah, Billy, Lane, Isla, or myself. If anyone else wants to do it, that's up to them and not my business. Quite frankly, a lot of us would like our interviews removed, but I doubt Chris will do that. We're all trying to move on with our lives. Sarah is doing so well. She's happy. Billy is traveling and just trying to live her life carefree, and Ayala is trying to expand her OnlyFans, Lane is trying to de-stress as much as possible, and I am starting a family. The FBI still has the laptop. If they feel that there is enough evidence on that laptop to arrest Greg and Kai, then they will, with or without investigation discovery doing a show. For now, I'm just happy that Kai is off the internet and Greg has no other options left. We started this with hashtag we stand with Sarah, and that is how it will stay. So Chris said that he had all the victims in on this, right? Because it, it really doesn't sound like it to me. We've all seen how TV shows and enough exposure on bad people can bring them to justice. We've all seen it. I honestly believe that this fight against Onision is not over. I do think we need more help pushing things forward, and I kind of wonder if Investigation Discovery couldn't really help push this forward. But if the victims don't want involvement with it, I really do feel like that should be respected. You know, they went into these interviews with Chris Hansen time and time again saying that they are doing this because they want to bring attention to an issue so that people don't come to harm in the future. And I'm confused at how that changes because it's on TV instead of YouTube. I know I did my interview with Chris because I wanted to bring more attention to what was going on. And I think if more attention was brought to it on Investigation Discovery that that could be a really good thing in bringing Onision to justice. A TV show big enough could really have that effect, which is what I have been fighting for for years, and a lot of you have too. Now my interactions with Onision do not victimize me in the same way at all as these other girls, so I do not want to make that comparison. But I guess my hope would be that they would in some way continue that fight if they truly are as concerned about potential for future victims as they said they were, because that's my, my priority. Above all else, I want to prevent him from being able to do this to anybody else. And from what I've seen, he still has support. He still has young girls supporting him. And that will continue as long as he is out there able to do what he's doing. If he is not brought to justice, he can and will continue hurting people. But I don't know that Chris Hansen's the guy to do it. There's too much against him. He has done too much sketchy shit. And he's clearly, right now, lying about having all the victims on board with this because they're not. I have had over the past several weeks discussions about a television project on the Onision case. The victims are in the loop always will be. That's that's just a straight lie. That is just a bold-faced lie. He looked into the camera, into the lens, trying to look into our eyes, and lied. I'll be doing interviews with him if such a project takes place. Again, a lot of this noise is merely drama. With who? I, who are you interviewing? Who is in on this with you? You know, if you have one or two people that do want to speak about this, I my hope would be that he leaves everybody out of it that does not want to be involved. That's the bottom line. I got into the Onision investigation because, quite frankly, you all asked me to do it. We've done multiple shows on it. I mean, I don't think that's your only motivation, let's be honest. You need money, and I'm not saying that there's no part of you that cares, but I think that you were kind of tapped out in other places and saw how much you could make on YouTube, on Super Chats, and now you're bringing this to TV, which will revitalize your career in some way if it goes through. So, I mean, let's, I just wish he would be straight. I wish he would be honest. We've done interviews with victims. 
law enforcement, people who know about the case. There is now a federal and a local investigation. We're going to stay on this, but television has the potential to take this to a wider audience. I do agree with the fact that TV can bring this to a wider audience. I've already said that. But another thing that I found <sighs> there were two sides to was the complaint that he made all these videos on Onision, accomplished nothing, and then moved on to talk about blood on the dance floor and left all the victims in the dust. All the work that he had done on Onision was no longer relevant, so he moved on and stopped caring about that whole thing. There are people that are really mad about that. But then I hear people complaining that he's wanting to continue this on a larger platform. So which is it? Do you want him to continue on and bring this to more people to continue the fight? Or do you want him to leave it in the dust? Because it seems like there's no right option right now. So I would love for people to be more clear on what their expectations are because I'm, I'm a little thrown off by that. I've seen the same people commenting both ways. The victims will always come first. Always, always, always. So please know that and put that in your formula when you consider whose motives are what as this social media debate continues. I mean, that's nice that you're saying that, but I'm not seeing you follow through with that based on what I've seen from the victims themselves. So Chris, I really think you need to address this. You need to talk about all of the dissent from victims and reconcile that with what you're saying here. I'll keep you posted as to exactly what's happening. We'll have some, some clarity very soon on where this project is going. In the meantime, I'll be watching and I'll see you soon on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I would really love clarity. I think we would all really like clarity. I think you need to be more transparent with what it is that you're doing. I think tweeting out that you didn't sell the rights to the Onision story and that's not how things work, I feel like that is like a lie of omission because you're not saying that you've been working with Investigation Discovery. You're not admitting that you are trying to pursue a show with them about Onision. You just say, of course I didn't sell the rights to the Onision story to Investigation Discovery. That's ridiculous. But at the same time, you forgot to mention that you are doing a huge story with them. I think that would have been relevant. It's just really shady to me and the lack of transparency makes me feel, and I'm sure a lot of other people feel, like he is only grifting and in it for himself. You can't play the role of everyone's hero when you look into our eyes and just lie whenever you tell half-truths. I was really confused about all this when I was looking into it because he said, no, I didn't, but then it kind of looks like he did. And so I tweeted out asking people for more information and Repsion replied saying, I can confirm 1000% he has despite what he has claimed. He hasn't been released yet, but John Swan YT has evidence that hasn't been released to the public yet. And hot damn, let me tell you, Chris Hansen is a fraud. Can't wait till it's released. Neither can I. I am very curious as to what that will be. Pescator also responded saying, yes, Hansen is trying to pull a semantics trick, exactly what I said, by saying he didn't sell the Onision story rights, even though he talked about it. And several people apparently know that this is a lie. Hansen 100% sold the Onision story to Discovery and Shiloh confirmed it. Also, he's been pressuring several survivors to sign release forms. Well, in my opinion, that's a good sign, even though you shouldn't be pressuring people or pushing people. The fact that he is required, in some sense, to use release forms means that if people don't want to be involved, hopefully, legally, they don't have to be. Someone else responded and said, I heard he's doing narration work for Investigation Discovery because they wanted to do a story on this. It's not like selling the rights to a TV show with paid actors or anything like this. Kind of like a documentary, so to speak. Yeah, I really feel torn because on one hand, I, I do think more eyeballs means a higher chance of bringing Onision to justice, and that is absolutely a good thing. But I want to make sure that the people involved and the people who he has hurt are protected. So if he goes forward with some kind of show, with investigation discovery, my concern isn't whether or not he makes money, because I've kind of already explained my view on, on making money on things like this. My concern is that victims are respected, and if people are willing to be on the show and they want to be on the show, that's one thing, but if they don't, they need to be left out of it. And Chris, you need to be more transparent with what it is that you're doing, because these people that have been victimized by Onision have been through enough. They do not need stress from you. So if you intend on doing this, and they have the option to be a part of it or not, that needs to be communicated clearly. That they do have an out 
if they want it. This is not a mandatory thing. That There's absolutely no reason why they need to be waiting, wondering if their face is going to show up on investigation discovery. Like, be honest. Do not tell half-truths and be straightforward. So that's my message to Chris Hansen. Hopefully, if I'm not blocked by now, he receives it well. And for the love of God, stop promoting ridiculous shit online. Stop taking $50 and saying anything on Cameo because if you honestly, if you truly care about the victims and you are pursuing this for the right reasons and you want to bring justice to Onision, then don't discredit yourself by doing this stupid shit because you're only making it worse. You are bringing down the investigation and you're making it all just look like a clown show. We want people to take this seriously. And when you're promoting Pablo Escobar, I think it might be difficult for people to do that and respect you. I was very interested by Repsion's response to me on Twitter. I hope more information comes out. But my stance at the time being is that Chris Hansen is pretty sketchy. I do think that he's done a lot of good in his life and I do think that some of his intentions are for the right reasons, but I think a lot of them are not. And the desperation for money and the shady deals and the shit he's promoting to people really makes his true colors show. And if he wants to be a reputable source of information, if he wants to be proud of being an investigative journalist, stop doing stuff like that. Stop it. Get off Cameo. Because there's no way you can actually bring victims any kind of justice when you represent yourself in such a poor way. You're turning yourself into a joke and by doing that you're turning this entire story into a joke and so many of us on YouTube have been fighting so long for this to be taken seriously and that's why it was so exciting to have the Chris Hansen on board because we thought it would bring a sense of legitimacy to this cause and it's doing the opposite. So that's very much not appreciated, Chris. So this video became a lot more complicated than I initially thought. I thought I was just gonna come on here and bitch about stuff, but I wanted to bring in evidence and show history of things to bring in context and try to show both sides whenever I felt that it applied. But overall, I'm pretty pissed off. But I am curious to hear your thoughts, so make sure you leave a comment below. Like this video if you like it. Make sure to subscribe to my second channel, youtube.com slash Vlogs. Check out that unboxing, I have it linked below. And I would absolutely love it if you would follow me on TikTok. I've been having a lot of fun posting videos on there and just kind of doing silly things to take my mind off all of the seriousness that I seem to have been bringing to my channel lately. Also, big thank you to everybody out there supporting me on Patreon. Like I said, this is something that takes a lot of work. I put all of my time into it and pour my heart into the things that I'm talking about, so I couldn't be here without you, and that means absolutely the world to me. Now, I'm gonna go drink this glass of wine because this video done stressed me out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Why don't you take a seat? No, I don't want to take a seat. Have a seat. No, I'm just gonna go. Take a seat right over there. How does he do that?